Why aren't women priests? In other Christian communities, they are ordained. Why in the Catholic Church aren't women given the sacrament of holy orders? What's up, um, Father Josh, and this is Ascension Presents Ask Father Josh. So recently, uh, Pope Francis was asked by an interviewer, uh, are women ever going to be ordained to the priesthood? And Pope Francis, he, he said something that Pope St. John Paul the Great said uh, during his papacy, which was that it's just, it's never going to happen in the Catholic Church. And you might wonder, like, why? And so we're going to jump into that question today. There's seven sacraments in the Catholic Church, uh, baptism, confirmation, reconciliation, holy communion, anointing of the sick, marriage, and holy orders. And each sacrament has what's called a proper uh, form and a matter. The, the form is the, the how, the matter is the what. The form are the, the words that are said, the actions that are done, the matter is the stuff. It's the, the whatness to the, to the sacrament. The sacrament of holy orders, the matter is the bishop, the successor of the apostles, laying hands on the man and using the right form, the, the words of ordination. If the bishop were to lay hands on a woman, it wouldn't be a sacrament. Why? Because that's not what Jesus Christ gave us with the Eucharist. The, the matter of the Eucharist is the bread and the wine with you know, the water added to the wine. Like that's, that's the matter. That the form of the Eucharist are the words of consecration. In order for the Eucharist to be the Eucharist, you got to have the bread, the wine, with the water. You got to say the right words. If you don't, it's not the Eucharist, right? We can use cookies and milk, for example. I think cookies and milk are great. They taste so good. But if a priest were to use cookies and milk, but to say the right form, but not have the proper matter, even if he said the words of consecration, Cookies and milk would never become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Not because cookies and milk aren't good, not because they are less important than bread and wine, but because Jesus Christ did not give us cookies and milk. Jesus Christ gave us bread and wine. Like That's the matter he gave us. He gave us the words of consecration. So we take what he gave us, and that's what, what we use. We can't just use stuff that we want with the sacrament of baptism. The matter is the water. And the form is, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I have a friend in seminary who's from a village where milk was the, like, the sacred liquid of their land. But if they were to replace the water with milk and still use the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, it wouldn't be baptism. A baptism is only baptism whenever we use what God gave us. Jesus Christ said, baptize them with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If a priest or deacon were to use the words, I baptize you with water in the name of the Creator and the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, guess what? It's not baptism. You got to use the proper matter and the form, the how and the what, the, the right words and actions with the right stuff. At the Last Supper, whenever Jesus Christ instituted the priesthood, he ordained men. And because that's the proper matter. Like, that's what we use. We can't say, well, you know what? We're going to change it up now because we're more advanced than they were back in those days. We have to take what he gave us. Now, if, if Jesus Christ wanted women to be ordained, he would have ordained Mary, the mother of God, his own mom. Like, she was perfect, immaculate. Like She is the most holy person ever, like the greatest saint in the history of the church. But he didn't ordain Mary. Mary was a leader in the early church, but she wasn't ordained. Mary Magdalene, she was a minister to the apostles. She was extremely holy, but she wasn't ordained at the Last Supper. Martha was one of his best friends. She wasn't ordained. And, and we even read in the Acts of the Apostles. In the Acts of the Apostles, there are so many women who are spoken about, women who, who were prophets, women who spoke in tongues, women who offered hospitality to the apostles, women who served the poorest of the poor, women who even taught men. And yet, None of these women were ordained. Like they were not ordained to the priesthood. Each one of these women, Mary the mother of God, Mary of Magdala, Martha of Bethany, the women of the Acts of the Apostles, they are all great saints because they embraced their place in the body of Christ. They received the gifts that God the Father gave to them and trusted to them, and they shared those gifts generously, saying, Fiat, yes, Lord, to the particular mission that God gave to them. And because they did that, the holy souls they ministered to became, many of them became saints in their walk toward eternity. And, and the, the church is filled with a number of holy women 
who embraced their feminine genius and became a bridge for men and women to fall in love with Jesus, to stay in love with Jesus, to abide in the love of Jesus Christ on earth as it is in heaven. There are four female doctors of the church so far and probably many more to come. Well, two of these doctors of the church are St. Teresa of Avila and St. Catherine of Siena. These are, are women doctors of the church who were profound theologians who not only taught women, but they used their intellectual gifts and their spiritual insights to also teach men. St. Catherine of Siena, she was also a mystic. She audibly heard God speak. And on one occasion, God told her in locution, if men will humbly listen to the, the teachings of women, I will show them great mercy. Right? So, so God, God expects for all of us as members of the body of Christ to receive the charisms that are given to each member of the body of Christ. And there are a number of women who have received charisms of evangelization and of catechesis, of teaching, of preaching, of ministering the word of God, who had profound gifts that have built up the kingdom of God. And this isn't just for a few doctors of the church. Like even in modernity, there are a number of female saints who have not only transformed the church, but also the world. People like Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who inspired the entire world, many people all over the world, to prioritize and care for and serve Jesus Christ in the poorest of the poor, in the marginalized, and the disenfranchised, and not only to serve the poorest of the poor, but she also used her platform to teach and to preach the word of God to leaders of nations, to presidents, even right here in the United States of America and all over the world, to even corrupt leaders. She went and she proclaimed the gospel. Women like Mother Angelica, she not only inspired people to grow in their interior life and to, to, to pray before the Blessed Sacrament and to recite the Holy Rosary, but she also preached the Word of God, the sacred scriptures, on television, teaching the church's doctrines on a worldwide network that extended beyond her geographical boundaries all over the world, forming future clergy and religious and lay leaders in our church. Women like Servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, a woman religious who not only taught universities, but she also formed priests and deacons who were trying to minister to uh, brothers and sisters in the African-American community and did not know how to do it well. And she taught them how to preach and how to be ministers and how to offer pastoral care. And she also served with the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, preaching to bishops of our nation and teaching them how they could be better shepherds to the people of our land. These are our women who embrace their feminine genius, who embrace their gifts that God entrusted to them and share their gifts generously with the entire church in the world and were for many a bridge for them to come to him, the Jesus Christ. St. John Paul the Great, he encouraged women, embrace who you are, embrace your feminine genius. The reason why Pope Francis and Pope John Paul II before her and every pope before them for the past 2,000 years history of the church has been consistent in that women cannot be ordained in the Catholic Church. It's not because women are less than men. It's not because women don't have gifts of authority or teaching or preaching or healing or ministering or serving the poorest of the poor or administering. No, it's, it's because every sacrament in the Catholic Church, there's seven of them, every sacrament has a proper matter and a form. And the form and the matter of the sacraments matter. And that's why... The Holy Fathers cannot ever say we're going to be able to ordain women because we can't change what Jesus Christ gave to us. So hopefully that is helpful in understanding why Pope Francis, Pope John Paul, and the other popes throughout the history of the 2,000-year history of the church have said women would not be ordained to the priesthood. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, this is Ask Father Josh. I'm Father Josh Johnson. God bless. Mm -hmm.